folks, that was about the most pitiful clap <laughs> I've heard in nine weeks of revival. If you're glad he lives, would you give God praise, a hand clap of praise? That's better. Hallelujah. Good looking crowd here starting off service on Tuesday night. And we got ball games going on everywhere. And I hope they just come on in and be a part of the service. I promise you, I'd rather have them here in a ball uniform as not here at all, wouldn't you? But we're thankful for what God is doing in this meeting and just thankful for the presence of the Holy Ghost. I'm glad that He's here. I appreciate what the Lord has done in this meeting, what He's doing in this meeting. And what he's going to do in this meeting. Aren't you? Praise the Lord. I love it. I'm going to ask Brother Philip Hodge tonight if he would come and bless this service. Speak blessing into it. And I'm telling you, I'm, I'm humbled just to be here tonight. Brother Philip. Let's go to the Lord. My Lord, my God, my Savior, and my Redeemer. God, as we fall on our unworthy face before a holy and perfect God, Lord, we come tonight, Lord Father, seeking you. Lord, we know that nothing's going to be accomplished here tonight without your presence. And we pray, God, that your spirit will walk up and down these aisles, Lord God. Father, the ones that need help, Lord, will reach out and grab hold of the hem of your garment tonight, Lord God, we pray. Lord, we thank you for your presence, your love, your mercy, and your grace, Lord, that you can save a no wretched sinner like me, Lord God. Father, we just pray, God in heaven, Lord, have your way. Touch this choir tonight, night, Lord Father. May they sing like they've never sung before for your honor and praise. We pray, Father, for those that's going to come and sing for you, Lord. God, we pray, God, that they'll just check egos at the door, Lord God, and just come here to praise you and to worship you. And, Lord, we pray for my little buddy, Lord, that's going to preach your word. Lord, we know that one day that Almighty God looked down through time, and he knew he was going to choose Wayne McGuire, Lord Father. To preach his word, Lord Father. And we knew that one day he, in April 2017, he was going to have him preach, Lord Father. And we pray, God in heaven, that you'll breathe on him tonight. Hold him, Lord, between you and else scarred hands and pull him close to your bosom, God, tonight. Lord, just preach him, Lord, like you've never preached him before. God in heaven, Lord, just touch this service. Have your will and your way in every aspect of this service. And we pray, God, that we'll be careful not to quench your spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we humbly pray.
that old brother John saw. Thank God we get close to home every day. Every day. Aren't you glad you're saved tonight? Say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is good. Praise God. Thank God. Thank God. I'm glad God. The Bible said God has no respect. No respect of person. God loves you just as good as he loves me. He loves me just as good as he loves you. In yeah, and, and God's sight, there's no big eyes and little ears. It said God has no respect of person. Woo! Praise God. The king's coming. We got to get ready. Praise God. We pray the pack cup ready to go up at any time. Praise God. He might come. Bible Paul said, don't let the sun go down up on your wrath. Have you got a little something you and your neighbor, you better tend to it tonight. <laughs> Jesus might come before daylight in the morning. Woo! Aren't you glad you're saved tonight? Thank God it's real! Woo! Praise God tonight. Aren't you glad you're saved? Yes. Aren't you glad that we all serve the same God? Aren't you glad that he don't love you no more than he does me? He don't love me no more than he does you? Because said God has no respect of yeah. a person. That means from the little one to, to the granddaddies, praise God. Yes, that means everybody. And you know what? A lot of people said it's so hard. It's not so hard. It's not so hard if we let sin alone. The devil will come as, but God will give us more power to overcome. Yeah. He knows what we're going through down here. It just knocks us closer to the kingdom. It makes us love our neighbor more. It makes us want to go to church more because the world's getting worse all the time. The church getting more heavenly all the time. Say, pray to pack up, ready to go up. Praise God. The king is coming. We got to be ready. If there's any sin in the life, we're not going. Because Jesus died to take the sin. He died that we could live. Yep. He gave his life that you and I could live. And surely we can live for him this good feeling. What I feel tonight, you won't feel at the ball game. Bless God, you won't find it at the movies anywhere. You won't find it out there when women about half dressed are showing themselves. But thank God I like it when Jesus shows up. I like it when the king shows up. Woo! Praise God, the king is coming! Yeah. Woo! Praise God. <laughs> well, I've took up enough time, but I feel good. God is good. If you, if you never have no problem, there's something along with your faith. I'm not trying to be smart, but I'm just telling you the truth. I've been there. I've been through, uh, uh, through the ashes and the cold. But thank God, I'm glad there's victory in this thing. If the Lord had come, I'd say, Lord, I'm ready. Praise God. We love you. Thank you for coming to First for You. God bless you. Let's go to church tonight. May God bless you. Give God a hand. Well, that's one of our elders here at the church. He's not the oldest, but he's the second oldest. And any time he wants a floor, he can have it. He's, he's paid his dues. And I don't know if you can tell he can't see anything. And he can barely hear us, but he hears God clear. And I'm thankful for him. Hallelujah. That's better preaching than most time you'll hear on a Sunday. Amen. Ask our ushers to come tonight. And we're also going to have Brother, Brother Elder, would you come bless the offering tonight? Oh, thank you, Jesus, for your blessing. I appreciate Brother Jim and Judy. They've, they've, they've been faithful to, do, to this meeting. And, brother, we love you, brother. I just want to thank God for these meetings. Judy and I have attended as many as we can. It was a couple of weeks we was going, but God has worked in my heart. I couldn't begin to tell you how he's worked in our hearts. And that's what it's all about. Yes. Just like the brother down here said, he's drawn us ever closer to him. And if we look for him, he's there. Yes. The man preached the other night. Do you see what I see? Do you see his hand working in these meetings? Praise God. Praise God. Let us pray. 
Lord, thank you for the meetings. Thank you for your sweet Holy Spirit. Thank you most of all for the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who gave his life on Calvary that we might be free like we're singing up here tonight. And Lord, we know your presence is here, but we brought him in with us. We ask you to anoint again the singers, as the special singers they come through, and we ask you to anoint that preacher as he comes through. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless this offering. Bless it that, that would further the kingdom of God and keep these meetings going as long as they can keep feeding the people and feeding the flock. Thank you for Brother Chris here, Lord, for the stamina he showed and for all the faithful people in this church that have supported these meetings and all the others that traveled miles to get here, Lord. And we, we, we look to be in your very presence tonight. Praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Murrayville, Georgia. Would you make welcome tonight the Marksman?
start to say this morning, I, I was talking to Leonard Mayfield, he prayed for me out there next to the rock that y'all have, and, um, but I remember when I first got saved, my mom and dad never went to church, I didn't know what church was, I mean, I heard about it, maybe seen it on a movie or something like that, but my mom and dad never went to church, and my uncle Donnie Fowler came to witness to me and tell me about Jesus, and I, I, I didn't know how to be saved, I didn't know, I didn't understand a lot about the Bible, but I knew I was lost. And I knew Jesus was the only way. Yeah. And something Leonard said uh, tonight that really touched me when he said that, that he was looking at the stars. And I remember going out before I got saved, before I went to Tabernacle, Sunday morning and got saved, I remember going out looking at the stars saying, Lord, I don't know how to be saved, but I want to be. Yeah. And I, I went to that service, and uh, I don't even remember what I said because it's not about what you say, but in my heart, I was ready to accept Jesus as my Savior. And uh, I'm going to just be completely honest with you tonight because that's where we need to be at anyway. I hadn't heard no praying like that in a long time. And the first time I heard praying like that was when I got saved and I went to Tabernacle. They were praying like that and I didn't even know what to do. They were just shouting, praying, running the pews. I was under the pew thinking, what in the world did I get myself into? But as I began to grow in the Lord, I began to realize how important it is to pray. And I really do appreciate that. That touched me tonight. So thank you so much. I can't enjoy my Bible just reading here and there. I like to take it as it comes and never skip a line. No need to read the verses to say you'll enter in. If you don't like the one that reads, you must be born again. Preach, 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 preach the gospel, trust God, he'll give you words to say. Preach, 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 preach the gospel, regardless who it hurts, pray that God will have his way. Some preachers well thought of in their church Who change the text God chose for them Afraid of who they'll hurt They'd like to pick the scripture That's easy on the soul Afraid they'll lose their job If they get on their members' toes Preach, 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 preach Preach the gospel, trust God He'll give you words to say Well, back yonder sits a member, the preacher tells himself He's never missed a service since I've been the pastor here Well, I'm led to mention whiskey and how it dooms your soul But since he drinks a little, I'd be getting on his toe Preach, 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 preach the gospel, trust God He'll give you words to say, preach strings don't you we sell our junk cars to uh, Japan for 
just a few dollars a pound. They make strings out of them and sell them back to us for several hundred dollars a pound. And they rust on the ship on the way back and they break about the second or third time of year. All right. country's going through well you look around and say well there ain't nothing I can do but there is something that we can do those of us who believe there's power sent from up above if we get down on our knees and you can make a difference if you try get up on the couch and sound the battle cry don't wait someone else to do the chore there's power on your knees so hit the Now 
it's okay to burn the flag, but you can't pray in school. What's gonna be the next thing that our great courts will do? And I wonder if our Bible is the next thing on the list. And persecution can't be far away, so I say this. That you can make a difference if you'll try. Get up off the couch and sound the battle cry. Don't wait for someone else to do the chore. There's power on your knees, so hit the floor. There's power on your knees, so hit the floor. You know, we was back there in the prayer room, I told Brother Chris, I said, right here's why you're having the revival you had. I remember when I was a boy, my daddy passed until he was 88. When I was a boy back in the dark ages, We'd go to church, you know, we'd pull up in them little old mountain churches down there in the Blue Ridge Mountains, and you'd hear, back over yonder, you'd hear a bunch of men praying. Back over here behind the church, you'd hear a bunch of women praying. And when, when church started, we had church, like y'all are having around here now. That's what makes a difference. They ne never be too much prayer. That's, what's the main, that's the main thing that's missing in our lives right now is prayer. See what you think about this. This is one of the old timers. One, two, three. There will be a happy meeting in heaven, I know. When we see the many loved ones we've known here below. Gathered on the blessed hilltops with hearts all aglow. That will be a glad reunion day. Beholding his face, it will seem but just a moment of praising his grace. That will be a glad reunion day.
Thousands of years and millions of sinners have knelt at the altar to pray. And the Spirit comes in like a mighty strong wind in the house that the carpenter built with his blood. Jesus the carpenter built a great house. He built it with timber and nails. He stained it with blood and he filled it with love. The house that the carpenter built was the church. The house that the carpenter built was the church. All right. Somebody's wondering who this young man is. This is my grandson. This is my personal bodyguard, Mr. Will Wheeler. It's Mark's son. Down this second one here. This is his first time here. Last time we was here, he wasn't with us. He, he sang with us back several years ago, and he's back now and doing a fine job. Mr. Tommy Dutton is his name. And, of course, this next one's been Mark's been 40 years now. He started when he was just a pup. He got a good-looking daddy, though. That's my son, Mr. Mark Wheeler. <laughs> down on in, down on in, Darren's daddy sang with us for 27 years. Darren's been with us 32 now. He doing yeah. fine. He can play anything you hand him and sing any one of the four parts. And I hate people like that. Y'all know the feeling. But he doing a fine job. Mr. Darren Chambers is his name. My name's Earl Wheeler. I organized the marksman in 1967. I, I believe that counts out to be 50 years ago, don't it? I'm glad to be here. One, two, three, one, two. <laughs>
Amen. We was talking about prayer there a minute ago. We were at this church up in New Tazewell, Tennessee back uh, last year. And uh, I, I've, if I've ever felt like I went back in time, I felt like I went back about 100 years. I'd never seen anything quite like it. Uh, Brother Chris, they, they, the preacher said gather around the altar. Well, they all just come and stood there. And I didn't know what they was going to do. I thought, well, he's just going to get in the altar and pray. But uh, they spent about 40 minutes giving uh, prayer requests. And, and when somebody would give a prayer request, about four or five randomly would just go to them, pat them on the back, hug their neck, shake their hand. Never seen it done on that fashion, you know. And I just sat over and squalled like a baby, you know. I just, I just never seen it quite like yet. And they done that for about 30, 40 minutes, and then they prayed about another 40 minutes. And, and they, women got in the back, and the men got in the front, and I mean the Holy Ghost come down. And it was, I mean, it was something else now. We had a time. We sung about an hour, you know, and I figured they'd dismiss and go to the house. But they wasn't ready to go, man. They still want to have church. And uh, <clears throat> they got to, people got testifying. There's an old boy sitting on this side. And he got up and he got testifying and you could tell he's a live wire, you know. He was he wasn't just testifying, he was test preaching, you know. And uh, he got the, he got carried away there and he said uh, he said, Now wherever I'm at, he said, if it hits me, he said, I'm gonna testify. And he said, uh, he said, matter of fact, he said, I work, he said, all of you know I work down here at Food City. And he said, the other day I had to give my testimony on aisle five. I thought, I like him, you know. I like him. And I thought, there's a song in that somewhere, too. So I uh, wrote a little song about the old boy. It's called uh, Testimony on Aisle 5. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Well, he stacks the shelves and mops the floor. Down at the local grocery store He's been a Christian for some time He's just not the silent kind And he's so saved he's not ashamed If the spirit moves he's not to blame Some say he's a little overboard But he just really loves the Lord Testimony on our fire Wants the world to know that God's alive Jesus saves, he lets them know As the tears begin to flow The Spirit moves and makes him shout He couldn't hold it in, had to let it out With the need to clean up on our night but testimonies on our fire. Well, he works real hard, but now and then he's got to tell them where he's been. How he was lost, but now he's found And it just don't matter who's around He's already on the boss's list He just might lose his job for this But he says, I'll work for free today There are just some things I gotta say Testimony on our fire Wants the world to know that God's alive Jesus saves, he lets them know As the tears begin to flow The Spirit moves and makes him shout He couldn't hold it in, had to let it out Well, they need to clean up on our night But testimonies on our fire
before you reach the checkout line. Just follow the bread and pastry sign. Just park your cart and hang around. And hear the old time gospel sound. Testimony on our He lets them know as the tears begin to flow. The spirit moves and makes him shout. He couldn't hold it in and I let it out. Well, they need to clean up on our mind. But testimonies on our fire. Yeah, they need to clean up on our Testimonies on our fire. <clears throat> Amen. Someday this stampering tongue will falter. Join the ransom choir on heaven's bright shore forever to praise the King. And while the ages roll, I'll keep on praising Him, and my voice will never tire. My song shall ever be Praise the Lamb who died for me And I'll sing it While ages shall rule In a million years have passed in that wonderful place That's right. My song of praise will just have begun yeah. Yeah. And my song Ever. will never end While I look on His face And my song will yeah. never be done and while the ages roll, I'll keep on praising Him, and my voice will never tire or grow, and my song shall ever be, praise the Lamb who died for me, and I'll sing it while they all the ages roll, I'll keep on praising Him, and my voice will never tire or grow, and my song shall ever be, praise the Lamb. It's amazing I never saw till today how foolish 
a son I have been. The grass is not greener here, and nobody cares. Oh, but I know where I've got a friend. He's still setting my place at the table. Still calling my name in prayer. He still looks up the road. Somehow he knows his prodigal son is coming home. What I needed, I had all along. Now I'm leaving this place. I want to see my father's face and hear him say, Son, welcome home. I like this. When I was still a great way. From my father's house, he came running to greet his lost son. And I said, your servant I'll be. But he never heard me. He cried, my prodigal son has come home. He's still set place at the table still calling my name in prayer now I'm in the right place I'm just a trophy of grace the prodigal son has come home still set my place at the table and he still called my name in prayer he still looks up the road and somehow he knows his prodigal son is coming home he's coming home prodigal son is coming home Can't hardly do that with Tommy yet. We we've been working on it. I mess up on a bass chord or something somewhere. <laughs> that fella, brother Lance Carpenter wrote this like that last song we sang. He still sat at my place at the table. Him and Mark's been writing together for several years now. He him and Mark were writing a a new song, and my brother Lance had uh, Alzheimer's, and. He finally got to where he just couldn't. They were working on this new song, and they had it partly done. They couldn't get it finished. They never did get it finished. Brother Lance yeah. passed away. And uh, Mark was in Nashville one day, and he ran into Ronnie Henson. Wrote The Lighthouse, you know, and several of those. And Mark got Ronnie to have him finish it. And I want him to sing it for you. It is, it is tough. Well, we've only sung this one time. Twice. <coughs> Twice. Well, twice. We practiced it one time and sung it one time, I think. It's about, but, but we're going to do it anyway. Ain't nobody here but us. We're not up here trying to impress you with what we do. The main thing is still to Amen. come anyway. That's the preaching of the Word. 
I made a gospel song together, but I had to tell you that. On this side, tears we've cried. Goodbyes tear us apart. On this side, life's a rough ride. Just empty dreams and broken hearts. On this side, Good friends die Only memories remain On this side We hurt inside Just burdens, fears, and rain But on that side their smooth time and no more years of pain on that side the sun shines never storm the rain on the far side with the lamb's bride God is on His throne Rest forever By the river On the far side We'll be home I'm thankful this ain't all there is to it, ain't you? I'm thankful I read the back of the book and I know how the story ends we're leaving this for that and if you want far side with the Lamb's bride and God is on His throne rest forever by the river on the far side we'll be home and on the far side we We're going to do one with a banjo, and then we'll be done. We've enjoyed it, and we, had the, like I said, the best part yet to come, the preaching of the gospel. We do have some CDs outside if anybody's interested, and uh, if you're watching on the Internet, that's marksmanquartet.com if you want to order some CDs. So, uh, but we, Mark's going to get the banjo, and Derek's going to get the guitar, and we'll, that's two. Johnny. Well, we had a request for it, but, yeah, yeah. we'll do it. We had a request, but we're going to do it anyway. Oh, boy. I don't know what happened to that, but um, <clears throat> it's a banjo. What do you expect? You know what the difference in a Harley and a banjo is, don't you? You can tune a Harley. I bumped it with my guitar a while ago. That's what I did. That's close enough anyway. We're just we're just doing bluegrass music, so it don't really matter that much anyway. Close enough. Go ahead. Oh, 
John was a Baptist and I am a Baptist too. John was a Baptist and I am a Baptist too. Teach me, O oh Lord, preach like John and to baptize one by one. John was a Baptist and I am a Baptist too. Oh, Peter was a preacher, and I am a preacher too. Peter was a preacher, and I am a preacher too. Well, he preached to the lost at Pentecost, and I want to reach all the lost. Peter was a preacher, and I am a preacher too. Thank you. How about it for the marksman? Didn't you enjoy that? <laughs> Praise the Lord. I like these fellers. I wish my boys was here tonight. They still battling the flu. Yeah. When is that, Brother Earl? 20th through the 23rd. 20th through the 23rd of June's their music camp. My kids, Lord willing, is going to be there if they get over this flu. Surely they will, but they and I'll, I'll be there too, Lord willing. Uh, we enjoy that music camp and every kid that plays music. I believe we ought to teach our kids to play music, don't you? Because yeah. they can glorify the Lord with it. But it's real good. Any, any age kid want to come, they'll, well, they'll even take them out and feed them a bottle. If you just want to drop them off down there at music camp. Ain't that right, Earl? <laughs> Boy, I love the singing tonight, and I appreciate it. This is old-fashioned night tonight, if you ain't figured that out now. I'm telling you, I ain't put on my cowboy boots tonight. But I, I love the preacher that's coming. He comes from Graham County. And I mean, he lives, he lives 35, 45 minutes out of Graham County once you get to Robbinsville. And, uh, uh, but I love him, appreciate him tonight, and I want you to make him welcome. He pastors at Bear Creek Baptist Church. And I'm going to tell you something. There's got to be some clawing going on if you're going to pastor at a place called Bear Creek. Amen. So you make him welcome tonight as he comes. Brother McGuire, give it up for him. Amen. Appreciate it. Love you, Brother Wayne. God bless you, brother. Well, I'm glad I'm saved. Amen. It's been a wonderful revival to be in. Anytime you're in the presence of God, it's, uh, it's a little bit better than good. 
But this has is, this is, this been an outpouring of the presence of God and the Spirit of God. Every time we've got to be here and got to meet here, some of the best preaching I believe I've ever heard, best singing I've ever heard. It's just been a wonderful place. I told Brother Chris, we were standing over right in here one night, and I told him this has definitely been an oasis in the wilderness. That was about the, sometime about the middle way through the second week, and on Friday night of the second week, my little girl got saved right over at the bottom of them steps. <laughs> praise the Lord. We give God all the glory. We praise the Lord for, for what he's done. The devil can, uh, he can do a lot of things, but now there's something, there's uh, been a lot of it got here that the devil can't take away from you, amen? I praise the Lord for what God can give you. I thank God for his peace. Thank God for the spirit of God that we can just come and just gather in the house of God and God just love on us and you can come hungry and leave happy. You can come broken and God will just fix everything that's wrong with you. You can come lost and get saved, Amen. Great to be in the Lord's house this evening. Thank God for all He's done for us. It's good to have all of our church family and everybody with us this evening. We appreciate you coming over. Appreciate your prayers. If you have your Bibles this evening, you want to turn with us. Turn with us to 2 Kings chapter 6. I ask you, if you will, when you find your place, to stand just for a minute for the, the reading of God's Word. And I certainly do desire your prayers this evening. I know that. There's nothing that I can say that will be of any value at all without the help of God. There's nothing I can say myself without God's help. I've got to have the Lord this evening. 2 Kings chapter 6 and verse 1, we start reading. And the Bible says, And the sons of the prophets said unto Elisha, Behold now, the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. Let us go, we pray thee, unto Jordan. And take thence... Every man a beam, and let us make us a place there where we may dwell. And he said, answered, Go ye. And one said, Be content, I pray thee. And go with thy servants. And he answered, I will go. So he went with them. And when they came to Jordan, they cut down wood. But as one was felling a beam, the axe head fell into the water. And he cried and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. And the man of God said, Where fell it? And he showed him the place. He cut down a stick and cast it in thither, and the iron did swim. Therefore said he, Take it up to thee. And he put out his hand and took it up. I'd like to preach just for a minute with the Lord's help on reaching your potential. Reaching your potential. Our gracious God, our Father, in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for this day that you've given us. God, we thank you for your goodness, Lord, for loving on us. Lord, thank you, God, for everything that you've given us. Lord, thank you for Calvary. Lord, the sin death that was paid. Lord, not just for myself, God, but for all of humanity, Lord. And God, I thank you, Lord, for letting us be able to be in your presence this evening. Thank you, God, for just manifesting yourself here this evening. Thank you for the singing. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've given us. And I ask you blessing, Lord, upon the reading of your word. Lord, give us a clear mind just for a few minutes, Lord. And God, touch us, Lord, we pray. Hide us behind the cross of Jesus, Lord, that Christ might be lifted up, that he might be exalted. And God, that I'll not be seen, that I'll not be heard, but God, everything, Lord, that it'll all revolve around you, Lord Jesus, we pray. God, have your way in each heart, have your way in each mind. Father, we give you the praise, we give you the honor, we honor and we give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I was uh, talking to a fellow one time, and he's, uh, I would call him a scoffer, I guess. He said that, uh, that this axe head, he said that it didn't swim. He said this axe head just kind of floated around. And I told him, I said, I don't know what you've been reading, but now where I read it right there, he said that the iron did swim. And that's, uh, if you can't, uh, he said, no. He said, no, you dismissed the whole, the whole concept of what he's talking about. He said, it never swam. And I said, my brother, if you can't believe that, there's going to be a hard time for you to believe in John 3, 16. You can't believe what God's able to do right here. It's hard to believe what God's able to do out there. And I thank the Lord for what God's given us. And I thank him for 
he, the, for the, the goodness of God and for the blessings of God and that God can love anybody. Somebody as, uh, as worthless as I am, somebody that's got absolutely no benefit whatsoever, but God in his great love and in his great mercy, he gave his uh, only begotten son that I could believe in him and that he died in my place and bared my sins that, that I could have life and that I could have it and I could have it everlasting and I could have life and have it more abundantly and that I could be set free from, from the bondage of sin and Satan. That I, myself, my personally, that the Lord would have an interest in, in my life. That he would have an interest in me. Jesus loved me that much. Now there's nowhere else that you're going to find anywhere you're going to read about anybody that's going to love you with a love that's like that. His love is an unconditional love. His love it ain't got no contracts, no stipulations to it. There's nothing Nothing that you can do to make God love you anymore. There's nothing that God that you can do that'll make God love you any less. He loves you enough that He died for you. He loves you enough that He lived for you. And He loves you just exactly like I am. He loved me when I was a sinner, and I still am a sinner. When I was lost and undone without God, He loved me. When I got saved by His grace, He still loves me. And I mess up all the time. I sin and come short of the glory of God. God, but God still loves me. God is a personal God. He did not save me. And I want to just kind of, I want to pick up. And the Lord put all this together while Patrick was preaching last night. I know kind of which night I was supposed to be in here. And then Chris, he told us whenever we was at our church last night, what night we was going to be trying to preach. But what Patrick preached last night, where the grace of God has found you, whatever your name is, that's where grace has found you. But God did not save you to set you on a shelf. God did not save me just so I can sit somewhere and I can be real quiet and say that and, and, and just kind of just moke my head around and say, well, I'm saved. God did not save me just to take me to heaven. If God would have saved me just to take me to heaven, he would have took me the very instant that I got my name written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. There's more to it than that. There's more to it than a lot of times than what we just uh, than what we see in this day and time that we live. I tell you what we see a lot of this day and time that we live in. We see a lot of profession and not a lot of possession right now. The day that we live in, when somebody big as God moves into somebody as small as me, He's going to stick out somewhere. It's going to be evident that whomever you are, that you've been with the Master, He will change your life. That's what God's able to do. Amen. He didn't save us just to set you on a shelf. He didn't save you just to set you in a church. He didn't say, save me just so, uh, just so I could just be just like I am. When God saved me, God had a plan. And God has got a plan for your life. God's got a plan for my life. And I've not got no guitar in here. I ain't going to play. There's people in this church that can play. Amen. But I've got a, I got a piece of hickory right here that i got in my hand. Now, when you look at it, you can look at that right there and you can say, well, that don't look like much. See, that's the way we are. I sure don't look like much. There ain't no need in the world that the Lord would desire somebody like me. Now, to everybody else, I mean, you may not really know what that right there is, but I'll tell you about it. See, I'm a, I'm a, I, the Lord's called me to preach. He saved me by His grace. Thank the Lord. And He's called me to preach. And, and I log, me and my brother do. And God has to speak to me in real simple ways. I'm not, uh, I'm not real complex or anything. I'm certainly not going to tell you anything this evening that you don't already know. I'm not going to preach to you nothing that probably ain't already been preached in the last nine weeks while we've been here. But I am going to try to share it with you the simplicity of Christ that he's laid it on my heart with God's help give it to you just like God gave it to me that's all I know how to do and if 
if we want to look at this right here and that little old piece of hickory right there, and when you look at that, you say it don't look like much. There ain't much to that right there. So that's the way that I am, just my own, by, just by myself. I don't look like much to nobody else, but there's a God in heaven that can look at somebody like me and he can see that there's something inside of that right there that's got some potential inside of it. Now, just to look at it and to walk by it, they ain't no need to have that. It's not going to build you a good fire and keep you warm all night long. That right there, it's not going to. It's not going to be something that you're going to build a house out of. That right there is not going to be something that you're going to build a great big anything out of. But what that has got on the inside of it, down in amongst all the things, the excess that's there, is some potential to be what God wants it to be. But in order to get that, there's a process that it's got to go through. What we've got to do as God's children, if you've been saved by the grace of God, you're no longer your own. You've been bought with a price. You do not have, you do not reserve the right. I don't deserve the right within myself to be a dictator of my own life. If God has put his stamp on my heart and he's put his seal on my heart, I am his. I ought to be willing to do what he wants me to do. I ought to be willing to go where he wants me to go. I ought to be willing to stand where he wants me to stand because I'm no longer my own I've been bought with a price that's got to go through a process in order to get to where it has in order to reach its potential that right there that piece of wood has got to go through a process in order for me and you to reach our potential in the Lord Jesus Christ we've got to be willing to go through a process people says well I don't like that process see that's what's wrong with us we've never been we've never had that that close intimacy with the Lord like we really needed to have to allow the love of God to saturate our lives we never stayed where we needed to be long enough when we realize it's a process if you want to look at somebody in the word of God look at Joseph and you can read all about him some other time but if you want to look at somebody that goes through this process in order to reach and maximize their potential and just be where God wanted him to be and be used of God and to be effective of God Joseph is a good man to look at and the first thing we want to do is we want to realize that we've got to, that we're in this process and we want to be in this process that God didn't save me just to set me on the shelf that God didn't didn't save me just so I could do nothing the rest of my life. God saved me because he loved me. God saved me for a purpose and God's done something in my heart and he's changed me from who I used to be and, the, and I have a new heart. I have a new desire. I am a new creature in Christ Jesus according to the word of God. That just don't belong to me. He said so in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. He said therefore if any man be in Christ he is a new creature. Old things passed away and behold all things become new. If God does not get a hold of your life and God does not begin to do something with you you can go ahead and bet on one thing that God never had nothing to do with your profession that you've got right there. God will change your life. Amen. Amen. Right here in verse 1 he said the sons of the prophets said unto Elisha Behold now the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. First thing we want to look at in order for you, in order for me to reach my potential, in order for that to reach its potential, it's necessary that it spends time in the place. Now just any kind of old place ain't going to be right. Just any kind of old place, it ain't going to do. Just any kind of old place, it ain't uh, it ain't fitting. But now, see, we've got a we've got a man right here over in uh, Matthew and over in Mark and over in Luke and John. We've got a man here that's by the name of Joseph, and he is the earthly father and overseer of Jesus Christ. He's a carpenter, and in order for us to spend and get uh, this into what we've got it a uh, desire for it to be and to reach the outcome that we've got. We need to spend a little time in the carpenter shop. And that's the first thing we want to look at. That's the place is we need to spend some time is in the carpenter shop. Well, whenever we get in the carpenter shop, I tell you what's going to begin to happen. The first thing is he's going to do is he's going to take the bark off of this piece of wood right here. Let me tell you what that bark is. That bark is its original identity. When anybody walks by that and when the first time they look at that, it don't have to have leaves on it. When 
when you see that, you know that that's a hickory tree. You know what kind of fruit it's going to bear. You know what kind of nuts is going to be on it. And you know everything pretty much that you need to know. You know what kind of root system that it's got. You know what it's down in the ground. You know what leaves is going to look like. But now when you look at that and you look at it again and you take the bark off of it and you take its original identity away from it and you begin to do that, that covering is removed. That's what the convicting power of God will do to my heart. It'll begin to take my heart and when God does a work in me, He takes that old nature that I've got. He takes me just like I was and He makes begins to work on me. He takes my old identity away from me. He takes that old rough, that old callous, that old hardness that's right here, that's on the outside. That's an old protective layer that's around that tree. He's going to take that off of me. He's going to get rid of that because where I was, He ain't got no use for me the way that I was. But thank God He's seen something in me. He's seen something that He can make out of me. And if I be willing, I can spend some time in the carpenter's shop and I can let God begin to do a work in my life. If we can get that covering removed. We got to get that covering removed. We see a lot of times whenever we get to that place right there, we get a misconception and somebody gets to thinking in their mind. They get to thinking, well, if that right there is the way that that is, then the first thing Jesus is wanting to do, he's wanting to take something away from my life. He's the cross is taking something away. It's not letting me be what I think I ought to be. It's not letting me do this. Church is not letting me do this. It's not letting me do that. Hey, friend, I want to tell you something tonight. I want to tell you that it's not what you me and you think about life God's not trying to take anything away from me he's trying to give me something far better than what I've already got he's trying to love on me in a way that I ain't never been loved on before he's trying to help me he's trying to help you what God's got is the very best and he don't hold nothing away from his children he said to ask and you shall receive I tell you what God will do he'll take his draw knife he'll lay it down there and he'll begin to work on you if you'll spend some time in the carpenter shop The convicting power of God takes our, our former identity away. When he gets the bark off of that, see my papa, he's, uh, he, used to make, uh, he used to make axe handles. I spent time in the woodshed when I was a little boy. Didn't have no idea some of the boringest days I've ever spent in my life watching him set in there. His working, his raining, kind of like it has been. They wasn't nothing else to do. I was just a little feller. But I was studying on this one time and God began to bring memories back. God began, I began, I could sit there and I could see my grandpa as he'd take the bark off of that piece of hickory and I could watch him as he sat there and he'd take that big knife after he got the bark off of it and he had just that plain piece of wood in his hand. I could watch him as he sat there and he still began to cut away the excess it, it was uh, the bark was off of it but they were still things that was there that was not a desire for it to be there for it to reach its potential he had to cut away the excess friend that's the way that I am I can be I'm saved by the grace of God but I've got to be willing to stay there in the carpenter shop and let God cut away the excess see anything he said over here if you want to look there he put it up on the screen in, uh, in uh, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 21 the Bible talks about us being fitly framed together and I want to tell you if Jesus don't build the house he said your labor is in vain anything that I've got that will not fit in the kingdom of God he wants to cut it away he wants to cut away the excess it's, it's something that's of my old nature it's something that's of myself it's something that's not becoming of a child of God I've said it's not got no place in God's house it's got no place it's, uh, it's got no place whenever we come into the sanctuary of God. I need to spend some time in the carpenter's shop allowing God to cut away the excess. Yes. So that's part of the process. It's part of the process. It's not the entire process, but it's part of the process. See, the Bible tells us to study to show thyself to prove unto God a workman that needeth not be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. See, that there is letting God cut away the excess. It does not matter what somebody told me. It does not matter what I thought up sometime while I was out in the woods. It does not matter. What does matter is what thus saith God. And anything that I think, anything that I get warped up in my mind, if it don't line up with that right there, it's some of that excess 
it will not fear on what God's got. I can't reach the potential that God's got for me as long as I'm indoctrinated with all these isms from all these other people. I need to get along with God and spend some time in the carpenter's shop. I need to let God have that kind of dominion over my life. I need to let God rule and reign over me. He knows what's best for me. He knows what he can give me. He knows He knows me. He made me, created me. And he's the one that's got a desire for my life. There's nobody here that can tell me right now what you're going to be, where you're going to be at in five minutes from now, five years from now, or five days from now. We don't have that potential. But I tell you, there's a God in heaven that knows every breath you draw. He knows knows every breath I draw. He knows where he's want to put you at. He knows what he wants to do with you. He knows where his plan. See, that grace that Patrick preached on has found you and God saved you for his purpose and you've got all kinds of potential if you'll stay in the process in the carpenter's shop. If you'll stay in the process. So we don't like that. Oh no, people says, you don't understand, preacher. See, there's a lot of things I don't understand. But I do know What God has wrote in his word. And I do know that what God has, that it'll work. And God wants to take that and turn it into that. See, they've been a lot of excess taken away. Jimmy Russell, they've been a lot of, they've been a lot. Now look at the difference. Look how much that's been cut down. And see, God don't want near as much as me a lot of times as I think. What God wants is my heart. See, everything that goes around on the outside, all that stuff's been took away, Patrick. There's just a little bit of the heart's all that's left right here. That's what God's interested in. And if God begins to do something like this with me, and he begins to work on my life, hey, I can say glory to God that he's began a process. And But this ain't the end of it. If I take this right here, and this has been in the hand of a carpenter, this has been in the master's hand, and it's been some time here that's been spent with the Lord Jesus Christ Romans chapter 20 or Romans chapter 2 verse 27 28 and 29 you're going to find some scripture there where the Bible begins to talk about the circumcision of your heart and the Bible talks about that and it's the Lord Jesus Christ it's the power of God in heaven that's cutting away the excess that's in my life and he talks about it he makes room if you can see that right there there's a slit that's cut right through the heart of that hey glory to God children that's the power of God and the salvation unto all them that believe the word of God it'll cut the heart out of humanity it don't matter how much uh, how much you know how much you think the power of God it'll strip you everything that's on the outside of you it'll get you right down to where you're just almost nearly nothing and when we get there God can do something with you God can do something with you see all this right here see we still ain't got there yet but there's a process that's taking place. There's, there's a lot of that that's been took off. I can remember Papa sitting there. And he'd take that old broken glass. And he'd sit there and shave that down. He'd spend hours. And I ain't got the patience for that. I'll just go ahead and tell you. I'm not a patient person. But I'd watch him sit there. He wasn't taking hardly anything off of it. But he'd sit there with that piece of broke glass. And he'd shave that off just a little at a time. See, when God gets you there, there's some big things that's happened up through your life. That son God, has, he's, he's cut away chunks at a time. But see, when we get to maturing in Christ and we begin to get closer to this right here, see, we've got to begin in number two, to reach your potential. It's necessary that you go through the proper preparation. The proper preparation. Just any kind of old thing won't do. Just any kind of process won't do. Any kind of preparation won't do. See, that's where we get a lot of times we get messed up. I don't know about over here, but over at home, see, we've got a crowd of people that wants to come to church on Sunday morning, and then they don't come Sunday night or they don't come Wednesday night, but they want to come on Sunday morning and get up in the choir and sing, Oh, how I love Jesus. See, according to the Word of God, you ain't hardly there yet. When you get to where you're able to sing, Oh, how I love Jesus, you'll be faithful to the house of God. You'll be faithful to the prayer meeting. You'll be faithful to the house of God. Hey, friend, that's what God will do for you. He'll take you from something like that, and He'll begin a process 
is and he'll work on you. And I tell you what it is, sometimes it ain't real good. Sometimes it's painful. Sometimes it's hurtful. But God loves me and God loves you and he wants the best for your life. God wants to bless you and we've got to be willing to get rid of myself. See, now if we look at this right here, he said, I must decrease that he might increase. They've been a whole lot of me took away. They've been a whole lot of that that's already gone so that God could be glorified. Now, if we look like that all the time, boy, now you club somebody that. So you club somebody that too. That's all that is. You ain't, I can't be one bit effective if that's as far as I get. Saved by the grace of God, part way through the process, and then I get out of the carpenter's shop. I quit going through the proper preparation. See, God's got something else He wants to give you. God's got something else. If you look in verse 2 right there, he said, Let us go, we pray thee, unto Jordan. Take thence every man a beam. Let us make us a place there where we may dwell. And he answered them, Go. See, there's some preparation that went in before they ever left. Before they ever got permission to go anywhere, there was some preparation that took place. And there was a willingness to go. There was a desire to go. But you got to be equipped and you got to be ready to go. To reach your potential, it's necessary that we spend some time right here in the word of God and I go to Sunday school with Jesus and I let him be the author and finisher of my faith I don't worry about all this other stuff it's the simple facts on the pages of the word of God it's what God said and let God be true and let all men be a liar and let God himself teach me what he wants to teach me he can going to use other people to do that He's gonna, he can use other things to do that but children it's a, it's a relationship with the God of heaven that they'll That'll inspire you to be used of God. God loves on us. God wants to help us. And God's able to do all those things. And see, whenever we begin right here and we get in this process and if we get, we're in this carpenter shop and we spend the time in this place and we go through the right preparation, see, God, he's got something he's wanting to put on the end of this. Now, it ain't no great mystery. There's an axe head goes on the end of that. What that axe head represents in this passage of Scripture is the is the anointing. God wants to put an anointing on your life. So he's got everything already fit for that to go on here. God wants to put an anointing on your life. Everybody is not anointed to preach the gospel. Everybody is not anointed. I've got a guitar, and these three or four young's got stuff over here. I mean, I need to bring mine over here. It ain't got all that stuff on it. Mine ain't got nothing like that on it. I'm telling you. Everybody's not anointed to play music like that. Everybody's not anointed to sing like Brother Chris and some of the rest of you can sing. Everybody's not got that. But what God has got a plan for you. See, he took you from an old, rough, ragged sinner. And he took you and he cut me down and he cut you down and he stripped us away and he's got us to where we've got the potential that's in Christ Jesus. And in reaching that, God wants to put this anointing on my life. And what God wants to give you is whatever he does give you is the ability to be effective. That's what it's all about. Some people say, well, I'd like to have power with God. I'd rather have power with God as anything I know. Well, children, that's a great thing. But what, what we really need in my life and in, in, in our life is the ability to be effective wherever I'm at. If I'm down at the gas station, I need the ability to be effective to somebody that's standing there on the other side of the gas pump. If I'm down here and I'm at the ball game, I need the ability that God gives us to be effective at the ball game. I need the ability you to be effective in and out of the house of God. You can't buy that. You can't find that on the street. You can't find it in a book other than in the Word of God. It's the Bible. you got to spend some time with Him and be alone with Him and let Him spend time of cutting away the excess and fine-tuning you down and let God place that anointing on your life. My mom and daddy can't do that. They can't give it. They can't place the anointing on my life. But when that axe head goes down on here, well, if you think, well, I've got it now, the first time you ride back and sling it, you're going to throw an axe head off. It ain't going to stay on there. There's something that's got to hold that on there. And whenever we get that, we're going to find this little wedge right here. And it's already cut, and it's already made to go right there. That's what holds the anointing on there. 
In Psalms 119, verse 11, he said that he had hide his words in my heart that I might not sin against God. Now see, when we look at this again, the heart's what's been cut out of that. This wedge represents the Word of God. The Word of God, when the Lord puts that anointing on your life, the Word of God's what keeps it there. You can't keep it there by yourself. You can't keep it there just, uh, just, just, by, just by coming to church. It takes the Word of God. And you can't get that down in there. I just stuck that down in there. And it ain't halfway down in there yet. So you've got the only way you get that down in there is you've got to want that. You've got to drive that down in there. That's the way the Word of God is. I'm not going to just uh, take my Bible and flip it open a couple of times uh, a month and I'm going to get everything that God's trying to give me. If I'm going to go through the right preparation and I'm going to spend time with God, the only, there's so many things the devil's going to come my way with. There's so many things he's going to entice me with. There's so many things I'm going to be drawn away with. But if I want the Word of God to be down in the depths of my soul, the only way that I'm going to get it there is through praying. The only way I'm going to get it there is through fasting. The only way that I'm going to get it there is because it's something that I want more than I want anything in this world. I want a relationship with the God of heaven. I want his word to be down in my heart. I want God to be a part of my life. As Patrick preached last night, you've got to have God. There ain't anything else that's going to work. And friend, I tell you, there ain't nothing that's going to hold the anointing on your life except the word of God. That's it. That's it. It's the Word of God that'll hold the anointing on your life. God's got everything fixed. God's got everything there. And He's going to have you to look like that. Now, whenever you get to this place, you've got the ability to be effective. But you ain't reached your potential. There ain't a tree in here. All I'm going to do is tire something all to pieces. I can't do a thing. But if you'll notice, I don't know if you can see it or not, right in the very end of that, there's a nail. Most of them's got it. There's a nail that's in the end of that. It goes through that wedge. Part of it's in that wood. It's right in the center. Isaiah 22, 23 said, I will fasten him as a nail in a sure place. There is nothing. That's Jesus right there. Just any kind of word's not going to do. Just any kind of thought ain't going to do. It's got to be about him. Jesus has got to be the center of your life. He's got to be the center of the word. He's got to be the center of the book that you read. It's got to be about him. From Genesis chapter 1 all the way through the, the end of the book of Revelation, everything there, that it, it ain't something, well, that it might be, well, it's this, well, it's that. It's about him. That's the way our life has got to be. The Lord Jesus Christ wants to get me to a place that every single day of my life that I don't take a day off, and I don't take a day off from being a Christian. He don't take a day off from being God. I don't have a day that I can take off and just go do whatever I want to do. I don't get to take a vacation and go down to the beach and do whatever I want to do. If I really get revival in my heart, I'll be excited in the morning when I wake up because the same Jesus that loved on me last night, he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He said in Malachi 3 and 6, I am the God and I change not. Hey, thank God, friend, that's the God I serve. He's, a, he's the God of yesterday. He's the God of today and he's the God forevermore and he does not change thank the Lord he's God and there's nothing like him he'll change your life see we've done and come a long ways from where we was at through this whole process to getting right here verse number three or verse number two the last part third thing about reaching our potential number one it's necessary for us to spend time in the place number two it's necessary we go through the proper preparation. Number three, it's necessary that you and I have permission to operate. We have permission to operate. Look right there where he said in the last part of number, verse number two. He said, and he answered, go ye. He had permission from the master. See, when you look at the name of Elisha, the name of Elisha means God is salvation. Now, I want to just ask you just a real brief question. I ain't going to stay right here just a minute, just a thought. 
Wherever you're serving at, have you got permission from God to be there? The relationship that you are in and you're dating that boy or you're dating that girl, have you got permission from God to be there? That church that you're in right now, have you got permission from God to be there? That job that you're working right now, have you got permission from God to be there? And I want to tell you, if you've not got the permission from God, there is no way that you're going to reach your potential to be effective right there where you're at if you're not where God wants you to be. The only way you can reach your potential in this walk of life is to be in a place of God's choosing. It don't matter what it looks like. It don't matter how big it may be. Little as much when God is in it. If you are where God wants you to be, yeah, hey, thank God, that's where you're going to stay because that's where the goodness, that's where the best of God's going to be. That's where God's going to love on you the most. That's where God is going to give you his very best is in the place of God's choosing. The place of God's choosing. Sometimes we don't want to stay there. Sometimes I don't want to go there. Sometimes I want to go where I want to go. I want to do things my way. But see, I don't have that right. I've been saved by the grace of God. God's got something in mind. See, Joseph went through all kinds of things. But God had something in mind. He went through a whole process to get where he ended up. And God never left him. See, friend, God never left you. You're going through that process. Endure the carpenter's shop. It's necessary for you to be what God wants you to be. Endure that preparation that God spent on your life. It's necessary for God to use you. For God, what he wants you to be later on, maybe down the road, later on through life. It's necessary that you stay with the master. That you lay there and you let God love on you. Let God hold you and let God caress you in his arms and let him work on you. Don't reject the love of God. Don't reject the hand of the master. Let God do something with your life. Let the Lord have that control. And it's a place to have permission to operate. It's got to be in the time of God's giving. It's got to be two, two, just two things. The place of God's choosing and the time of God's giving. Now, if God, and uh, we read it over there in the Word of God. Esther, she said she'd come into the kingdom for such a time as this. There's never been a time in history like it is right now. God has allowed us to live in this day and age that we live in right now. I mean, it's just right on the brink right there. It could happen any day, any time. I, mean, it, I ain't got no idea when all that's going to take place, but God does. But children, it's the most exciting time that you've ever seen in life. It's the greatest time that's ever been in history according to the Word of God. I mean, you can read the news or watch the news and read your Bible and watch them coincide together. They never been a time like this. There's a time right now for soldiers to be in the field of working, striving together to win souls for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, we need to we need everybody. If you've been saved by the grace of God, you've got something to tell the lost and dying world. They say, well, I ain't ready yet. Well, as long as you're still in the carpenter's shop and you're not ready yet, that's all right. But if you went through all that or you quit somewhere during that process, we need to come and get right with God and let God help us to endure the process because it's necessary that you and I go through that to reach the potential that God's got for our life. He didn't save me to set me on a shelf. He didn't save me to hang me in the closet. He didn't save me so I could just sit around and do absolutely nothing and then bask in the ocean and the love of God. He saved me for His glory and for His purpose. It's what I've been saved for. Brought me out of darkness into His marvelous light. But see, when He got all that right there, He had the ability to be effective. Verse number four, the last part, He said they got down there and they cut down wood. He had a purpose. When he got down there, he, was, he had all that potential. He got down there, and he was being effective. You see, right here is a lot of times, God help me. This is where it gets dangerous for a lot of us that's been in church all of our lives. This is where it gets in a little tough place. We get in a place right here, and God's using us. That anointing's on our life. And God's got his hand on us. God's spent time with us. God's using us. 
and we're enjoying the love of God. We're enjoying our family. We're enjoying church. We're working in a church house. We're serving God, and God's loving on us, and God's good, and we're enjoying that. To the, I mean, this is God loving on us every day of our lives, and it's just getting better and better, seems like, all the time, and we get caught up in what we're doing, and we get to the place right here where he's at. If you look, number five, he said, so he went with them, and when they, or, or, at, at verse five, but as one was felling a beam, the axe head fell into the water. See, he was caught up right there in what he was doing. He wasn't caught up in paying attention to everything really that was going on around him. He was caught up. He was. He had the greatest intention. He was doing what he set out to do. He was there. He was right on point. He was right on guard, but caught up in what he was doing and caught up in his work. And there he did. He got caught up in that and he became less observant to his own life. And there the first thing he knowed, the axe head had fell in the creek, fell in the water. He couldn't get it back by himself. He was down there and had lost his anointing. Friend, let me tell you, that's what the devil, he wants to happen to us. He wants us to get caught up in doing this and caught up in works and caught up in things and caught up in this and that that we ain't paying attention to what's going on in the depths of my soul and I lose the anointing that God's put on my life. That's what the devil wants to happen. He wants that to happen to me and to you. That's his goal. He, he's, he's still going to try his best to destroy you. He's going to try his best to destroy you. But see, when this old boy got down here, he became less observant. And he lost this anointing. And there he was. He went from that back to this. He went from that back to this. Now see, whenever the devil, we experience something like that. And we lose our anointing. The anointing can end up looking like that. We dug that up digging a skid road one time. And I kept it for no absolute reason at all. But now I know why. When you lose your anointing, if we ain't willing to get back down there, we ain't willing to try to get it back, that's what will happen to us. That right there has got absolutely no use whatsoever. But at one time, it was as good as that one right there. But over time, time deteriorated. Where's the handle at? It's done and already rotted and gone. See, that's what will happen to me. It'll done and already be rotted and gone. But see, if you read over there when Elijah, when he was taken up, you'll read something that fell back to the ground. His mantle fell back to the ground. And Elisha picked it up. And if you're reading chapter 2, Elisha, he is a type of Christ. There in the city, Elijah cursed the waters and he cursed the ground. Elisha came in and they said, if you're really God's man, his name means God is salvation. He's portrayed as a type of Christ. Children, what God wants to give you is not something that has no benefit. God's not going to give you something that's wore out, that's useless. God wants to give you something that's beneficial for his glory. God wants to give you something that's beneficial for his glory. That's what God wants to give you. Now I want us to look right here, and I'm right now done. He said, the man of God said, where fell it? And he showed him the place where he cut down. And he cut down a stick and cast it in thither. And the iron did swim. Therefore said he, take it up to thee. And he put out his hand and he took it. So he went from that over there. And he, he was there and he was in a place. And he, he, wasn't, he wasn't just exactly, he wasn't satisfied because he knowed what he had and he had a realization that he had lost it. And there may be somebody sitting here right now and I don't know who you are, but God does. And you've been, uh, you want, you at one time, you was serving God, you was in the house of God, you was faithful to God and the Lord was loving on you and it seemed like you was being effective in everything that you've done and we fooled around in the process of time and let the devil get in our stuff and the devil's beat us to death and 
and he's just left us out there and we've got in this place and we feel like that we've lost our anointing that God has put on our life. Hey friend, I want to tell you by the grace of God because that grace that found you, God's not done with your life. They still have, they still hope because Jesus Christ is still King of kings and Lord of lords and he'll help you if you call on him. He'll love on you if you'll let him. He'll lift the burdens of life if you'll let him. See, whenever you get to that place and God comes down there and God begins to love on you and God begins to manifest himself to you and you're sitting here right now and you know I've messed up. Preacher, I ain't, I ain't where I'm supposed to be. I ain't been in this process like I ought to be. I've rejected the help of God or I've lost the anointing that God put on my life. I promise you if you'll come seeking him, you know where it fell off at. You know where you lost it at. You know what happened. He said if we'll confess our sin He's faithful and just to forgive us Our sin and cleanse us From all unrighteousness Hey friend of mine I want to tell you When the Bible says all That's what the Bible means They ain't part of it going to be left out They ain't something in your life That God can't do something with He's God and there's none like him He's God There is none like him He can do for you what nobody else Can do for you in verse 7, he said, therefore, said he, take it up to thee. Now, if he's standing on the bank, this wants to get you this picture. If he's standing on the bank, and it fell in right there, and it comes up here in the water, how am I going to reach down and take it up if I don't get down? How am I going to take it up if I don't get down. The only way that I'm going to be able to retrieve that. I'm going to have to humble myself. And I'm going to have to get down. And I'm going to have to get ready. Because when it comes swimming by. I've got to get it. God made it available. It was all in the process of God's time. And God gave us that opportunity. And whenever we get that opportunity. We can seize that opportunity. Because God said so. Now what the devil tells you. You can't do this and you can't do that. Well the Bible says that Satan is the accuser of the brethren. Ever before the throne. He don't like you. He don't care nothing about you. He wants to defeat you. Destroy you. He wants to shipwreck your life. But friend I want to tell you. Jesus did not die on Calvary's cross. This so I could live a life of comfort. Jesus died on Calvary's cross so that I could be forgiven. I could be saved by the grace of God and I could have a life that's hid in Christ Jesus and I could go from something like that to something like that and then let God do something like that with my life. I can't see all those things but hey thank God there's a God in heaven that's seen me a long time ago that gave his life for me that I could have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. 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 He said, if the Son has made you free, you're free indeed. Amen. Romans chapter 8, verse 1, he said, There is therefore now no condemnation unto them, being Christ Jesus. Well, if I've been set free by the grace of God, and God's put this on my life, and God said I can, what keeps me from going ahead? See, I ain't reached my potential. See, a lot of times... You let them boys get a hold of an axe, Jimmy Russell. Yep. Son, this right here, that'll get tore all to pieces. Oh, there'll be a swing, and I've got one. He's somewhere back over yonder. They can't hit nothing the same place twice, Philip. See, that's the way I am. I can be destructive with good intentions if I'm not right on time with God. And I'm not real sensitive to the Lord. Oh, I can make a mess. Oh, I can make a mess myself with good intentions. I can do more harm than I can anything else. I can do more harm than I can good. But see, Jesus done something for me at Calvary. He paid a debt for me that I owed that nobody else could pay. He set my soul free by the grace of God. And see... If I take this tape off, see, I'm going to show you all the things that's under that tape. I'm going to show you all the damage that I've done to myself while the anointing was on my life. 
I'm going to show you all, and it's going to be revealed to every one of us, and we'll see every time that I've done damage to myself. I'll see every time that I've hurt the cause of Christ. I'll see every time that I've just flat missed the Lord. Hey, but friend, I want to tell you this evening that there's a crimson thread, a scarlet thread that runs from cover to cover in the Word of God, and thank God there's some things that's under the blood glory. I don't have to go dig back up. I don't have to go look at no more. He paid my sin there. He set my soul free. He saved me by the grace of God. I can't preach nearly a leg, but I can because he said I could. Amen. Praise the Lord. I ain't got no benefit whatsoever all by myself. Can't do one thing. There's one of these some things that I'm going to try my best not to do. I'm not going to go scratch around and look again and see what all I've done to myself. All that's doing is loading the devil's gun. I can leave it under the blood of Jesus Christ. It don't matter where I've been, what I've done. If I've been forgiven, I've been saved by the grace of God. That's where it's at, thank God. Hey, praise the Lord. I've been forgiven, forgiven, forgiven by the grace of God. Praise the Lord. They ain't nobody else ever done any of that for you. Nobody has ever done anything like that for you. Nobody can do anything like that for you. But for all that he's done. Now how many of us right now, how many of you want to go and take the tape off of your life and show everybody here the damage that you've done to yourself? Good Lord, nobody does. Nobody does. Thank God I'll just let Jesus take care of it. Amen. I'll just leave it where it's at, thank God. And the devil, he'll bring it up. He'll bring it up. And he'll bring it up. They sing that song. I ain't about to sing it. That it's under the blood. Oh, praise his dear name. Hey, thank God this evening, friend. There's all kinds of things. That's under the blood of Calvary. That Jesus Christ, he paid a debt that I owe. He gave me everything that I have. He set me free. And I believe I'll just leave it where it's at this evening. Under the blood of the cross of Calvary that I might reach my potential see, if I go scratching around down there and I go to getting those things out see then I begin to see it again and a lot of times when the devil brings it back to you it's like that little boy that his little dog died he was broken hearted he was devastated he couldn't, just, couldn't hardly bear it Him and his dad went over and buried the little dog. About six, eight days later, a little boy got to look and wondering about his dog. He went over and dug it up. Well, it was a lot worse when he dug it up than it was when they put it in there, but the dog was still dead. That's the way you passed this. It's a lot worse when you go dig it back up than it was when it really actually happened. See, it's got a whole different smell. It's got a whole different look. But friend, if you'll just leave it over there and let Jesus take care of it and let and just just keep your eyes on the cross of Jesus, just keep a looking unto him, the author and finisher of our faith, and just try our best to seek him with all your heart and seek him while he's near, while he can be found. I promise you there's a God in heaven that'll love on you. There's a God in heaven that'll let you live for him. There's a God in heaven that'll let you serve him. He lets me serve him. He'll let anybody serve him if you're willing to go through the process. Hey God can do something with your life if you're willing to let him. Last thing in reaching your potential we have first we had to stay in the place go through the proper preparation necessary to have permission to operate to reach your potential It's necessary you pick it up again. If it's come off and you've lost it, it's necessary. As they come and get a song, I'm right now done. It's necessary that you pick it up again. There's no way you're going to walk away from the holiness of God, leave the Lord, and do it by yourself and be effective. There's no way. That you're going to reach the potential that God has for your life. Now, whenever I was a growing up, I could have told you some things that I would have, could have probably have been in my life. This ain't one of them. I could have told you some things that I might have been aiming on being, some places that I was aiming on going. But they was when I met Jesus, He changed everything. He changed me from inside out. 
He changed my heart. He changed my desires. He's got a different purpose for me than what I had. Friend, God's got a different purpose for you than what you think. Maybe I don't know where you're at right now this evening. Maybe you've been here most of this revival. But you just ain't never really got out of your zone. You just ain't never really got to where you felt free to worship God. Well, I want to go on record and tell you. If you can't worship God in this place, you can't worship God nowhere. If you can't worship God in this place, you can't worship God nowhere. And if I can't come right here, just randomly pick somebody out and put my arms around you and tell you that I love you. If I can't do that here, I certainly can't do it out there. But see, we've got that potential. People says, well, I don't like to talk to strangers. I don't either. I've never met one. I don't like to talk to strangers, Jimmy Russell. I've never met one. I can talk to anybody. My brother's not like that. I tell him that's his problem. But when God does something for you, and he gives you that revelation of what you was, and you may not be there yet, But children, you've got the potential to become something that's effective for the glory of God. Say, well, preacher, I don't know how I get those things. I don't know how I get from there to there. Well, first of all, you've got to get saved. If you've never been saved by the grace of God, you can forget works. You can forget being a good old boy. You can forget just being a good church member. See, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and verse 9, the Bible says, For by grace are you saved through faith, not of yourselves, not of works. It's a gift of God. It is the gift of God. See, God wants to take your pride and your original identity. He wants to take that away from you and give you something else. He wants to take me that was alienated away from the commonwealth of Israel Lost and undone without God, without any hope. He wants to change my life. And he said that he make us a new creature in Christ Jesus. But God's not done yet. You may be sitting here this evening and you're, 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 you're 80 year old. God's not done with you yet. You still got potential. We seen a man right here. I don't know how old you are, brother. We seen him right here just a minute ago. A rejoicing, praising, and glorifying God. The power of God still rests on that man. Bless the Lord. I tell you what, he's just good to get around every once in a while. I like to stand by him when we get in there to the prayer room. Hey, man. Hallelujah. He's got the anointing of God on his life. These people right over there sets a man that's got the anointing of God on his life. Now, children, it's not real hard to tell the difference in one that looks like that and one that looks like that. Or one that looks like that, or one that looks like that laying in that box. If God's put the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God on your life, you can't counterfeit that. There is no counterfeit. This fellow asked me the other day, he said, what's the opposite of God? I thought about it just for a minute. God has no opposite. God is holy. He's so far supreme that there is nothing that even comes remotely close to being his opposite. He has no opposite. He's in an elite category all by himself. You know what got you here this evening? The grace of God. You know what took you from being like this to maybe being like that? It's the grace of God that brought us from where we was. So how dare me quit on God? How dare me get in a place where I get comfortable and I get relaxed and figure I'll just sit right here a while and relax? Hey, friend, they still have plenty to do. They still plenty of people that's lost and undone that needs to be told that Jesus loves them. He's the way, the truth, and the life. And no man coming to the Father but by me. 
whenever the Lord restores you, whenever He reach, whenever you reach down and you're there in that place, and God He gives you that opportunity, and you get that pick out up again, and you repent, and God retires that. He loves on you. I tell you what, you can do then. You can leave a rejoicing in the love of God. There's nothing like Jesus. There's nobody like Jesus is. He's the greatest name that's ever been given. He's the greatest thing there ever has been. He's the greatest thing there ever will be. Any trouble you ever have in your life, He can fix it. If you're willing to go from that to this, all you got to do is be willing to let God have control of your life. As we stand, if you need to come to this altar, come right now. You may be here this evening and never been saved by the grace of God. God wants to save you. God wants to do a work in your life. God wants to change you. He wants to make you a new creature in Christ Jesus. He loves you. You may be a church member. You may be you may be a member of this church. You may be a member of, of somewhere else. It does not matter. But I promise you that God wants to do something with you something through you and he wants to help you reach your potential how old will I be when I reach my potential you never will reach your potential but we need to gradually all the time be gaining ground getting closer to him I need to be a decreasing he needs to be an increasing I need to be a getting smaller he needs to get he needs to be a getting bigger all the time he's God and there is none else. Nobody never love on you like Jesus does. Are you effective wherever you're at? Are you effective youth minister? Are you effective when you sing? Are you effective Sunday school teacher? Are you effective when you, you group singing? See, that's what God wants to do. He wants to help you be effective so that He can be glorified. See, Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me you sing if you want to brother obey the Lord children obey God just as I am without on me but that thy blood was shed got to be willing to let God cut away the excess see God is holy he's pure he's righteous he's the El Shaddai God anything in my life that won't fit into the kingdom of God he wants to cut away because he has got something better. Friend, be willing to let God do a work in your life. Be willing to let God. The Lord, He'll love on you like nobody else does. He's a friend that stick closer than a brother. I was sitting over there just a minute ago. I've been a nervous wreck all day. That's singing. And I thought about it just a little simple thought. God, you never have 
let me down before. Why am I tore all two pieces? Why am I so worried? I come to glorify you anyway. I told the Lord, if you don't want me to do nothing, but stand there and hold my hands up. I'm willing to do that if that's what you want me to do. God never has let you down. He never has let me down. None of the time, nowhere. Trust Him with all your heart. Let Him cut away the excess. Spend some time in a carpenter's shop. Let Jesus work on your life, Brother Chris. Upon an old rugged tree, hanging there between two thieves, my Jesus paid a debt for me he did not owe. But by his grace, I'll make it home, and by his love, he saved my soul. My Jesus paid a debt for me he did not owe he paid a debt he did not owe i owed a debt i could not pay i needed someone to wash my sins away and now i'm singing a brand new song since that happy day my jesus paid a debt for me, he did not owe. I walked on every day, and I had felt I lost my way from all the pain and my trials down here below. Oh, but then one day he set me free. He opened my eyes where I can see My Jesus paid a debt for me He did not owe He paid a debt He did not owe I owed a debt I could not pay I needed someone To wash my sins away And now I'm singing a brand new song since that happy day, my Jesus paid a debt for me, he did not owe. And now I'm singing a brand new song. Amen. Since that happy day, my Jesus paid a debt for me, he did not owe. Hey Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise for tonight. Did you enjoy the marksman? How about Brother Wayne McGuire? Amen, amen. What a great night. Brother Patrick, I ain't got over last night's message. Boy, and I tell you, tonight was just, it's like a cake. Last night was the first layer. Tonight's been the second layer. Tomorrow will be the third layer. Praise God, and God will put a little icing on it. Amen. So I'm so looking forward to that. I um, want to let you know Thursday, May 4th, from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. at the Towns County Recreation Conference Center will be the National Day of Prayer. So if you don't have anywhere to go on the NDP, we invite you to come be with us there at Towns County. And uh, there'll be preaching, a little preaching, and a lot of praying, and some singing going on there that morning. So hope that you'll... Uh, come be with us on that day. I, I so look forward to it. It's been wonderful. The last three, three years, ain't that right? Three years. It's been great. Uh, and also, uh, there'll be some coffee and donuts and, and, and some things like that for you that morning. So please be praying about that. Tomorrow night uh, will be the Jim Brady Trio. Um, it's going to be wonderful, I'm telling you. Jim Brady Trio, they're great. And uh, also, Brother Randy Hooper. Uh, he was our former assistant here at the church. Super Duper Hooper is going to be here tomorrow night. So let's start praying that God will touch him and help him as he as he comes. He pastors Salem Number 2 Baptist Church down in Fannin County. 
So let's pray that God will touch tomorrow night's service. If God don't move in a mighty way, tomorrow night be the last night of the meeting. So if you know somebody lost, you better get them here. I'm telling you, God's really moved. But I'm telling you, there's somebody else out there that needs the Lord. And somebody, that's why we've gone this, this far this week is because God wouldn't none yet. But, so we're waiting on him to move. Anything, Brother Lucas? All right, let's get our hands up in the air. Let's exercise. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Go by and see the marksmen. They have CDs.